All right, on this eye model, first thing you have to know, uh, there's a covering on the eye, and located right up here within this covering uh, is the lacrimal gland. It's a very gl uh, glandular structure that produces the tears that go across the eye and exit through the lacrimal bone in the other corner of the eye. So the important we have to know about the lacrimal gland, I not the lacrimal gland, I'm sorry. So we have to know about the eye is the optic nerve. The optic nerve, the optic nerve is rather simple to see, especially in a model like this. You can see the optic nerve coming out of the back of the eye. However, you also have to see is back here when the uh, optic nerve comes out, you see this Y shape. This actually connects to another eye, the other eye over here on the other side. And this point right here is called the optic chiasm, where the two optic pictures meet. And then, F, as the eye, as the nerve goes off this way towards the brain, it is known as the optic tract. If you look at this one brain, you can see what I'm talking about better. If you look at these two large, well not really large, but relatively large structures here, these are the two optic nerves coming in towards the brain. Right in this area, they merge together. This is your optic chiasm. And then, as you follow the, as, after it leaves the optic chiasm, you can actually follow the optic tract all the way around as it goes into the midbrain. This is your optic nerve, optic chiasm, and optic tract. All right, some things you have to know about the eye. Let me rebuild this thing here. Okay. For the superior oblique muscle, you can see it here. You notice that it comes up and then it cuts across the top of the eye. Uh, well, muscles don't normally want to just change directions rapidly without anything holding them. Therefore, if you look right in the corner here, you can actually see there's a little membrane right in the corner that holds the superior oblique in this place. This is known as the trochlea. It's just a little hoop that holds the superior oblique in place. Now let's look at the muscles of the eye really fast. Of course we have the lateral rectus, the medial rectus, the inferior rectus, and then up here on top is actually a two-layered muscle. On the bottom is the superior rectus, but the top is actually a muscle called the levator palpebrae superioris. This muscle actually goes over the eye, doesn't actually connect to the eye, and controls the eyelid. Then we have the inferior oblique beneath the eye, and the superior oblique, as I just mentioned, in the corner of the eye. All right, now let's try to get a look at the eye by itself. The first thing they have with going with the eye itself, you see this large green color. In a normal eye, this is the white of the eye, and it's called the sclera. See, so the sclera is the white of the eye. I'm gonna put side by side with this eye and get a better picture. So the white of the eye, the green of the eye, is the sclera. Here you can see this large clear lens structure. Here you can see the same thing as this lens. This is the cornea, cornea of the eye. And the cornea protects the eye uh, from any damage uh, that is too motivated. Located within the eye, you can see, you can see the color of the eye over here. The color of the eye is the iris, while the hole in the center of the eye, within the middle of the color, is the pupil of the eye. All right, let's take these two apart. Directly behind the pupil is another structure, it's called the lens. And what the lens does 
it actually takes the light that passes through the pupil and refracts it onto the back of the eye. And the back of the eye here is called the retina. And the, the nerves on the back of the retina absorb, absorb the light, turns it into nerve signals, and transmits it to the brain. And that's it for the sense of sight.